Here's another exercise to practice controlling a slideshow using the scroll effects. I've got a finished example here and I'll just go to preview in browser, preview page in browser. And this one was created so that it would stick to the top so it never actually moves, but the scroll will change the slides and I believe I set it to every 200 pixels. And the slide transitions are set to vertical and they are set to transition to take one second per transition. So if I slide down here, every so often it will change and it takes one second to change. So it's basically like a header with an image changing every time I slide down. If I go quicker, of course, it's going to speed up. And depending on the speed transition, it could be a little stuttery, I suppose. You would have to play with that. If I use my scroll wheel, I'm just kind of scrolling down to hit that 200 mark, backwards, forwards. And that's controlling a slideshow using our scroll. So let's go and quickly look at those settings. Go back to Muse. I'll highlight the slideshow here. Actually, I need to click away and highlight the whole slideshow, so I'll click it down here. Scroll effects. And under motion, to hold it in place, my initial motion is set to zero. And because my graphic was stretched to the width of the browser, I don't even have a uh, horizontal control option. If it was smaller, it would give it to me. But the basic thing here is if I want to lock it in place, initial motion set to zero, final motion set to zero. And if I had the ability to move horizontally, those would also be set to zero. Now the edge of the browser to the top of the page is 36 pixels. So the trigger point is set at minus 36, which actually places it flush with the top right here. In other words, as soon as I start to scroll, the effects will kick in. All right, so those are the effects I did here. So let's go to a new page and start this from scratch. I did create a new blank page called Slideshow Scroll 3, and I'll just double click on it here. And we'll start by applying a widget, a Slideshow Basic. I'll just drag that in here. And we will put in our own images. I'm just going to close this up here and position this on stage. I'll say about here. And I will center it. So we'll go to Align, Align to Content Area, Centered. Okay, so now that's centered on the page. And I will put my own images in there. For you, I want you to find five images of your choice, whether you find them randomly on the internet or they're from your own personal library. Just come up with five images and populate the slideshow with your own images. So I will be replacing these default pictures. We do that by going to the slideshow options, add images, and I have a folder here with it looks like seven different images. So I'm going to grab them all, and I can grab them all at once with a shift click, click open, and now they've replaced the ones that were there as a placeholder. While I'm here, I'm going to change the transition and the transition speed. So I want it to be a vertically moving transition, kind of following the motion of the scroll. So we'll do vertical. And I will increase the speed from a half second to a full second. So I'll replace that with a 1 and hit my tab key. I can leave everything else in place, but I encourage you to go in and experiment with all of these different settings. So I can click away to close the options box. I will do a quick save here. And really all I have right now is a slideshow. And you can actually preview the slideshow. You don't have to preview it in a browser. If I click on the navigation here, I believe it navigates me through. And that makes it nice and easy to edit these placeholder descriptions. I'm just going to leave them as they are. But you can see here that we do have the ability to navigate within the slideshow in author mode. All right, so I'll leave it right there and I'll click away. Now, what I want to do is I want to control this, of course, with the scroll effects, but I also want to lock it into place. I don't want it to scroll at all. 
in this case. And I actually want to spread it to fit the width of the browser and place it at the top. So why don't we put the positioning and sizing into place now. I'll start by dragging this to the top and I'll hold my shift key to constrain it. And it should snap at the top. And then I'll click away. I actually need to click, probably click it twice to highlight the image area. Once that's highlighted, I can do a resize. If I was to highlight the whole slideshow, the resize is grayed out. So let me just go into resize here, stretch to browser width. And boom, it's the width of the browser. I will warn you, some of it will get cropped top to bottom. I could increase the width or decrease it with these control bars right here. I'm going to leave it as is right now though. But if I was to play this right now, it would just scroll out. I'm not going to bother, but I'm just going to tell you it would just scroll out. We need to apply some scroll effects. Number one, to control the scrolling. Number two, to lock it in place. So let's do that now. I'm going to click away once and then reselect it as the slideshow. Then I go into my scroll effects. Let's start with the slideshow features. We'll check the box here. And this, I already know the top of the browser is 36 pixels away from the top of the page. Right now this is out of sight. You can see a little black line here. It's out of sight. So I'm going to get rid of that 100. It's just coincidence here. Minus 36. I'll hit my tab key. And that should bring it to the top of the browser. I'll actually bring it to zero for a second. And highlight that there. And you can see it there. I don't know why the preview wasn't catching up to me, but once I click back on it, you can see it right here. Now I can also grab this freehand and drag it back up to that minus 36. And we're back to where I want it to be. So in other words, this effect will start immediately because the trigger is right on the line with the top of the browser. All right, so once we've established that, we're gonna go and choose between autoplay or switch slides every so many pixels on the scroll. I will choose switch slides and I'll set this to 200. I found that that's reasonable for a demonstration, but you can tweak that and play with that. Basically, it depends on two things, how fast the user is scrolling and of course the distance creates an invisible trigger every so often. Now we can try this right now. Maybe I will. I haven't placed the lock in yet. I'm going to save it before I do anything though. Okay, now file, preview page in browser. Hopefully it won't slide out of the picture area before I get a transition. Well, you saw it happening there, but I'm almost off the page by that point. But it is working, so the last thing I need to do is just lock this thing down on the page. So we'll go back to Muse. I'll go over to my motion. Very easy. Just make sure your initial motion and your final motion are both set to zero. That will lock it right to the page. And I notice that my horizontals are grayed out, and that's because my element here, my slideshow, is already at the maximum width of the web page. All right, so this should work now. Let me save it. And we'll give that another try. So preview page in browser. And now I should expect it to transition as I slide down. But it'll act like a header and it'll stay in place. And there we go. And the transitions are moving along at one second per transition. I can use my scroll wheel as well. And it just cycles around. So I've got seven images here. And you can see it updating even on my navigation bar here because I can also do it this way. And that's just using the basic controls within the slideshow. And of course, you can uh, style these any way you want within the slideshow by double clicking on them and affecting the various properties. So I'd like you to build one of these as your second slideshow assignment today. Scroll back here, I can go back to the initial spot. Uh, if you're scrolling too fast, depending on the timing, it could get jittery. So that's something you would also, I guess, experiment with. So create one of these as your second assignment, using your own images or images you've found. 